Okay, so we were talking about uh, I changed my style of opening where and I didn't do it this time, but normally I'll have my hand here and I'll open and push that opening up against my hand so it already is squeezing up some clay from right here. You just want to make sure you compress the bottom. And then I do something that kind of recenters this clay once you've opened it. And I'm going to wrap my fingers around this rim. And then with this hand and the sponge, I'm going to pinch the clay and bring it up, kind of making a cone shape. The main thing is I'm trying to really feel the clay and make sure that every inch of this is centered, preparing it for the first pull. I'm not trying to thin it, although I did pull some clay up. I'm trying to make it more uniform, so I pinched a lot down here and brought it up into the wall and then I compress the top. Okay, so that's centering the wall, is what we call that. I'm just gonna put just a tiny bit of water on the inside and outside. Now I'm gonna undercut this right here, and you can use a knuckle pull. See how that looks? I use a thumb pull, and some people use a finger pull. Whatever you're comfortable with, I use the, the thumb pull, so I'm gonna put my thumb here, but notice the sponge is feeding water right before the thumb touches the clay. And so I'm gonna pull that ring of clay right up to the rim. Now, when I use a thumb pull, oftentimes I'll get right about here <clears throat> and I'm really fighting it. Stop, collar, and then continue pulling. <clears throat> It'll probably uh, do that with this next pull. So just make sure my there's plenty of water on the inside. I undercut first. Now when I undercut, my hand is on the inside, keeping that clay from just getting pushed to the inside. I want to really undercut that. And what I'm doing is creating a little ledge so I can lift that clay up into the wall. So like I said, right about here, it starts doing something weird right there. So I will then collar it and then go back to where I left off and pull that clay back up into the wall. Okay, so now um, Mark specifically wanted to know how do I get more clay up? Now, the style of pulling that I used just does that naturally. I'm really focusing on getting the clay up from here. But if you still have some weight there that you're trying to pull up, you want to, from the inside, push the clay out. See that little bump? That little bump is where the clay needs to be pulled up. So we're just trying to make a cylinder. You can see it's starting to wobble. All right, so what that tells me is I need to compress the wall. So I use a square and a rib. I'm going to use it first, this corner, I'm going to peel off the extra clay, or what I call the apron at the bottom. And if you look at the inside, there's some water standing in there, but you can see there that it's a sharp corner. If you look inside and you see a really rounded corner on the inside, that means there's clay that needs to be pulled up from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is this first pass is just to compress the wall and stabilize the form, getting rid of as many ring, throwing rings as possible. My hand on the inside is going to be flat, and I'm going to be flat against flat. And that's just to compress that wall. So I'm going to start way down here at the bottom. And my hand on the inside is totally flat. Now notice the, the rib on the outside is stationary, but the hand on the inside is moving. If you move the rib, Usually what will happen, especially at this stage, is you get those rings. So you really want to just move the inside hand, compress that wall. When I get up to here, then I lift that edge away. I lift this corner away from the piece and I continue. Main function here is just compressing the wall. 
All right, so now that I've got it compressed and I've got a little bit of form to it, I can go in there and take out all the extra water that's been building up. But I'm going to shape this by stretching instead of pulling it into to form. So first I want to finish my compression. Okay. I want to make sure, remember this has to be closed up to this size right here. So I don't want it to flare too much. But I'm going to, this is where I usually add some heat. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I'll add some hair dryer action to the bottom and it just gently and gradually dries out the bottom. And then I can show you how I will use one of these ribs to go in and push the piece into shape. And um, the first night I really wanted people to really just focus on the cylinder, so we're not going to give it a lot of shape. Our focus is throwing the neck separately and then throwing uh, uh, an opening uh, to receive that neck. And we also want to look at the, the line on the neck, so I know it has to come in pretty dramatically. So first I'm going to turn the hair dryer on. You won't be able to hear me, but you can watch. Okay, so now we've got basically this real basic form here. I'm just going to push it a little bit with this rib. I'm going to put the tip down into the corner, rock it out, and then blend it into the side. And that all happens holding it with the right hand, and I'm going to be applying pressure in that direction. But you'll be able to see over here what's happening to the form. One last point. The reason we do this is we're now actually making the inside shape, the shape we want, and you'll notice that the outside will get a little lumpy, and that, that just shows you where you need to trim extra clay away. So for Mark, uh, when you're forming the piece in this way, it's going to create all those little lumps on the outside, which later will be trimmed away, and that will, that will make your piece more weight appropriate. piece starts jumping around like that, all that really means is that your hand is dry, which my hand is dry, and the rim is dry, and you just need to put a little slip right there, and that'll keep your hand that from jumping around, and just make sure your hand is damp or wet. That should take care of that. So if you look at the inside, I'm, I'm trying to get that shape on the inside more perfect so you can see I have a little work to do right at the very bottom there's a little bump there and it, when I push that bump out it'll transfer to the outside so let's see if you can see that see there's that lump right there and I'll, I just have to keep in mind now if you look at the inside 
that lump is gone from the inside and it's transferred to the outside. And so now I'm going to continue shaping it and I'll trim that away later and I'll show you what that looks like. Now I'm going from this to this. Because I'm going from belly to top. Okay, so now you can see this is really wide. We're going to try to determine how narrow this has to be. It has to be right about there. So I have to push that in. And what I was telling everybody is instead of just trying to collar this, you want to first take the top and I've got my finger here and the thumb is pushing the clay in. And the sponge is just lubricating the clay and I'm pushing that top in and I'm going to push it in until it's almost flat. Okay, so doing that, now when I try to color this, it's going to color easier. Just have to get that moist. Notice no rippling, no buckling. So we'll do it again. Fold the top over. Now what we talked about in the class was sometimes you can just take your finger and establish the shape you want and then we're just going to push this, instead of collaring it, we're just going to push it over the finger. So is the inside finger touching the clay on the inside? It's actually there and I'm pushing the clay to the finger. Yeah, so the fingertip is touching. Alright, so let's see, I'm going to make a 45 degree angle there because that's what we'll need eventually and it is right about perfect. So now what we can do is we can try to thin this out and fine tune the shape on the top. And this is where you can add a little, like, you know, there's just naturally a bump there. I'm gonna take that bump out, but you could make that part of your design. All right, now we're going to check the angle and see if I need to do any changing. If I put that on there, it could come in just a tiny bit. So I'll just flatten that down. That looks, can you see it from the side? Down further, down, down, down. See it from the actual profile. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is, it has to come in a little bit. So you can push it down or you can pull it in. And by pull it in I just mean uh -oh. put a little moisture on the surface, a little slip on my finger, and then I'm just gonna pull this in a little bit. And the whole point of doing this is um, we've already thrown the neck. But at this point, if we were trying to throw the neck on top of this, it, it might be a little wobbly and it would be a little harder than throwing it. So you get the actual experience of throwing the neck without the clay going all over the place. And also this is good for learning how to put two pieces together. And the act of throwing a neck is very similar to throwing a spout, so it kind of sets you up for uh, throwing teapots. Okay, so that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is 
check out this. That looks pretty good. Remember this bump down here, that's extra clay, so we're going to trim that away later. First we're going to dry this shoulder, and I want this shoulder to be dry to the point where it can withstand any kind of downward pressure. The reason we don't just stack a piece on top of a, another piece is gravity is going to push that shoulder down. If we have two pieces coming together at that 45 degree angle, the weight is shifted to the wall, so it's pushing down on the wall, which actually strengthens the form. So I really want to dry this inside and out. I'm avoiding drying specifically right here on the edge. I want that to be a little wet. Anything here that might slump or change shape, I'm drying this pretty well, and 